<laughs> so are we live now? I think we are, are we? Hello everybody, uh, it's just good to be back and um, I have help uh, today for, uh, for, our sub for, for these uh, two subjects that we're going to be covering a little bit. It's my brother, I'm sure you have seen him and uh, let's see if the sound is good. Yeah. <laughs> sound is fine well i'm glad to be back uh, this is always exciting for me because you know i uh, uh, think of um, these subjects and trying to uh, go through them without uh, wandering off too far into uh, music theory and uh, things that you could easily also learn on uh, uh, some other you know uh, websites for people explaining to you music theory um, i'm going to uh, do this a little bit more banjo specific and um, give you a few uh, trips and tricks and we're going to start off with the um, uh, chord substi substitutions now what does that mean it means a substitution is just instead of something else you know so uh, for instance we would play a g chord and i play a different chord but uh, why why would we do that you know correct would be we plays a g and i play a g so we both do the same and I can add a texture by doing things. But we are both playing the same notes, the same three notes that make up the G chord, a G, a B, and a D. Now, if we, if we look at uh, um, early folk music, Pete Seeger would have sort of a pattern where he would go like... add a sixth note for instance you know uh, to to the uh, to the chord that Uwe is playing and that sixth note is like a standing note that is not doesn't want the chord to move anywhere uh, we have chords that are active that really want to go somewhere like that really wants to go here but we're going to talk about that later but just adding this six you can always hear that in banjo Earl Scruggs uses it up the neck here and it's the sixth note here, this E. It's the sixth note of the G major scale, so that's why it's called the sixth. Um, now, when you look at this, this, uh, this note, and Uwe plays a G chord, I'm adding a note that Uwe is not playing. And because I'm adding a note Uwe is not playing, the music becomes slightly a different experience not necessarily better but a different one and it doesn't sound wrong it sounds just more when we were children Uwe and me would hold up a guitar and then just strum over the entire guitar and just sort of bounce it back and forth and it would sound like a church bell now the sixth has sometimes have a, has a little bit of that you see that it's a nice sound and it doesn't really pushes you anywhere so but when we look at the six and we put that to the G this is also an E minor 7 chord it's, it's an E minor 7 chord or we could just play an E minor chord now we can play an E minor I can play an E minor chord while Uwe is playing a G let's just play, uh, play a rhythm and show you what it does one two uh, one, two, three, four. So, and I just play E minor. Now, when you 
constantly play that six note all the time it can be overbearing but sometimes just to put that in, note in there just makes the sound richer uh, as a duo um, now it, it starts off you know that a, a substitution would be also you know when, when we look at a, a a d note as the first the first string d note and the fifth string g note if i don't move and my brother moves like i'm playing this g play this in g play this g and then he would change to c now in this moment i'm stuck i'm not playing c i'm playing something else i'm playing a c9 that's what's called but don't think, don't worry about that now and then when he plays a d my g becomes a a suspended note a suspended fourth to the d which gives a d suspended chord sound yes but it works all the time through all of these but even though i don't move all of a sudden i start making substitutions you know i play instead chords now a substitution technically of course is a triad uh, with you know a real different a new chord like an e minor or uh, or uh, when i when, when i when i just played this you know i could i could have a, a, a i just play g all the way through while uwe is playing the different chords a lot of times this happens when uh, when you play backup with, with a banjo you know for instance i play g up here and I have two G's and a D. And there's a song like Cabin and Caroline, and I would just roll through on that G while mm -hmm. Uwe's changing the chords. Now, that sounds a little... Bland, uh, you know bland and not really 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 great but the, the because i haven't changed this note and i just always stayed here but uh so I basically i i played the extensions then, you, right? you play the extensions then but you know because you're playing the chords but mm -hmm. i stay mm -hmm. so it's not always that i add more he can just add more and i do less yeah. and uh and so let's let's look at a few you know real common bluegrass substitutions that we use for instance um when we have a chord, you know, we know we're going to go to C, from G to C. We use a, C, a G7 a lot of times. And uh, the G7 uh, can be, you know, like, um, uh, I just, just play a, a, a passage and I play G, G7, and then C. You hear that? So, but instead of, this, of, this, of the G7, uh, what it's done a lot in bluegrass music is uh, play an F chord, right? So I, instead, I, Uwe doesn't play that F chord, but I do. I just play that F chord just before, before, uh, before the C. So. Yeah, so you can hear that this F, but it's a lot of tension because I'm not only adding the seven note to the, to the, this flat seventh to the G, I'm also adding a, a nine which is the ninth note of the scale, an A. And I'm also adding the fourth note of the scale, which makes the G suspended, which is nice, which, because when I when I went G, and then I already put that C on here. And, and then I go to C, I'm already on the C note, which makes it very, makes it a very smooth transition. Now, when, when, uh, when I play it, when I just would repeat this, I can play any given F to go to the C. So just give you an example, I just play um, G. That just gives you more flexibility in adding a color and a tension before it releases back into this C chord. Um, 
And if I want to, let's say, do a different substitution for that, I can just play a D minor. A D minor is actually less tension, has less tension than the F, because I'm in the D minor, I have a D. And I only have this add nine and this flat seven. These and it sounds really beautiful if I'm going from G to C over the D minor. Uh, um, you get the idea um, but you if you know that you're going to be staying for um, um, for a long time like there's a cabin in the pines in the hills uh, you can you could this is the wrong song to do this really it's just an example you know um, I could you could start off with the D minor really you know or, or G and then go straight to the D minor and don't wait so long <laughs> I, this is these are extreme flavors I'm showing you right now um, and your taste has to be always your guide do I like what I hear but it actually is a beautiful it's a beautiful sound and if you know I'm going to see let's play a D minor before and don't worry if the guitar goes to D or the bass goes to D or anybody else. You're adding this flavor, this sort of icing, uh, this this ornamentation and harmonical ornamentation on top of this. So uh, uh, that's that's a beautiful way of going uh, of using a substitution. Now I can use a lot more uh, different sub substitutions. For instance, you know, to get a stronger color, uh, let's say I could use. Um, um, a flat nine, you know, going and a seven, right? And I could also, you know, that would be a diminished chord. But but let's let's just go to to, to the to I, this, I, this one here is an F minor, and I could do an F minor. So like. It's, it's very it's, it's a lot I know but but in the right context in the right song this could add a great flavor you want to say something I just want to ask you something and yeah. do you use uh, uh, any any of the uh, harmonized scale chords over this you know like like the a minor and B minor and then yes I, yes I do but um, th there's a few you know that really work work well um, before we get into no, this no. this is right but before we get into this, and what I do a lot uh, is, let's say, I have I have a G, and I know that the dominant seventh chord of G is D, right? So I use a lot of G D G D, you know, not staying on the D all the time while Uwe is playing the guitar. The G, G chord. Let's see, let's see. That would sound a little it's difficult. But if I use this as a G and then move into G, use the D7, use the D again, move into G, use the D as a tension and release it back into G while he's playing a rhythm. Uh, let's play a different rhythm like. as well to just keep on playing for me please right, 
so and because I can use this D so beautifully because it always wants it always wants to go here and Uwe doesn't necessarily need to play these chords I add this tension to the music uh, for instance yeah because G is the parallel you know major to to E minor um, E minor is parallel minor uh, to uh, E minor is parallel minor to G so let's play E minor mm -hmm. So go on. So if I if I if we would sing a song, um uh I took my family away from my Carolina home. It was about the western star to roam. Six long months on a dust cover train. Say heavens at the end. So far it's been hell. <laughs> Thank you. That was way too much, of course. But you, I, I just want you to get the idea that if I only stay on E minor, you know, and do different inversions like. It's gonna get, you know. So that's That sounds really good. But just to throw in that D once in a while, just really opens it up because I'm adding a substitution for E minor. Let's do it one more time. One, two, three. And so all of a sudden I have a a, a very different different feel of uh, of how this works together the banjo and the guitar because I'm starting to add notes that Uwe is not playing I'm having an F sharp in here and and uh, and, and, uh, and and an A which is a, a nine you know it's like a major seven ninth chord you know so but this here would be considered to be sounding wrong. You know, like this, and Uwe plays this note, his yeah. high G uh, on the G on the G chord, for instance. Yeah, you know, this, yeah. You know, it would, sounds sounds really weird. You know, if we play that. But these these seemingly wrong notes, they are very common in in uh, uh, to add this extra spice and you know excitement to music tension tension yes it's like when you play foggy mountain breakdown you play this flat this 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 flat five so you have this this note which makes or or when i go to e minor even then plays in e major with the guitar like lester flat did and so he's got a, a g a g a g sharp in there and i have a g minor but that together gives this yeah. eerie tension, you know, this beautiful tension, not eerie. That's it's just a beautiful way. Now, if you stay on the tension too long, then it starts to hurt. But if you just sort of touch on it and just sort of have it there and then go away, it really adds a lot to to the uh, uh, to the sound. Now, that being said, I I want to really encourage you to see that the. Um, um, that you know a, if you play music with somebody else together the result of you two will be the music and not you alone anymore you know as long as you play uh, in your living room it's only you but when you play with somebody else you're just 50 percent of what's going on really and together this will make a new sound so you have new opportunities that open up 
And that's where substitutions really come in handy because you can broaden the music. Now, you could now learn music theoretically, you know, what these things do and why are they there or why are they have been used. And I think that's a, that's a good way. But I personally think that it's like when you would cook a meal and you have a, a spice like thyme. Uh, would you try to go and read the, the, the chemical compound and try to find out what it does to your nerve ends in your mouth or nose, you know, what it, what, what it actually does and then try to use it? Or would you just try it and then you put it maybe in a loaf of bread and you find, oh, this actually works really well. Or you put it on potatoes or you put it in meat. And then uh, the nice thing is these differences that we have musically are these are like these spices. And it's not because I, this is not spicy by itself. And what Uwe plays by itself is not really spi that <laughs> spicy. It's a G chord. Yeah. And I play a D chord. But together we create this new this new thing. Now, now, if I let's say I would play an E, an E chord, just an E major over Uwe's chord, or I would play an A chord. Now, in the first moment, you would everybody says, "Whoa, what is that?" And but remember, the first time you you drank, you had a, a a sip of beer when you were six years old, or I don't know, maybe you never had that, or you first time you tried. Uh, to sip on a glass of wine and you wondered why can people drink that and maybe you still think that and it's okay but uh, but it's the same with musical spices you know first time you 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 play something and and uh, um, th then you all of a sudden wonder th does this make any sense but I show you just for instance this A chord over G has a flat five has a six and an added nine and this is a very strange sound. But listen to, if I always just use it, go away and use it and go away. Similar like a spice in a, in a loaf of bread, right? You don't have it everywhere distributed the same. You have a piece and all of a sudden there's a little bit more of the time and, a little, and then it's just bread, uh, just a hint of it because it's a remembrance of it. And, and then you have a little bit more. And it's the same with with these things that's that's just the way who helps me it's great that he's here <laughs> so so if he just plays a g chord rhythm just like that yeah just like that that's perfect and listen to the spice if i play g and now i i create a new kind of sound not new but for us right now uh g and a and i don't mix anything else I just stay with this one spice It's interesting because G then becomes like a subdominant and my A becomes like a dominant and it really it wants to release in, in D. Let's just play for a little bit the G and the A. One, two, three. So I use this spice when I'm in the key of D and Uwe, for instance, then goes to the key of, of uh, goes to the key of G, you know, in the chord. And I use the A as a spice to work against Uwe's G chord. So again, let's recap that. I'm in the key of D and Uwe sings a song uh, and it goes to G. Till night I'm alone with a... Okay, let's do it again. It's a little short. Yeah. It's a little short. It's a little short for that. I need a song number oh, four. Four, okay. Four. that 
that the, the A as a, as a dominant chord to D is again what we did before when I when I was in G in the beginning of this of this lecture and I was going between D D and G. It's very nice to have um, and you don't need to have a, a dominant seven chord. Just take a dominant chord, the dominant the D chord going to G. Now, for instance, I do a lot of these little little things when Uwe is for in, in, in E minor. Um, I show you if it, if I have E minor. And just to make it more interesting, instead of a D, maybe I just use a B, a B7 or a B. So I always try to find flavors, you know, now, like we said before, if you have the harmonized G scale, any of these chords, you know, will make us a, a, a specific spice. But all, let's say, if I just, I'm a G, and I just move up, each one of these uh, has a, has a has a flavor against what Uwe does. Yes. Let's let's just name any. Uh, let's say B flat. Mm -hmm. So so when you're playing your backup. Uh, um, if if the person uh, changes, you know, the chord, and you know the chord structure, it's always good to know the chord structure for any given song that you play in a jam session. But if you play it, and then you know the chord structure, and you know they go into a C, well, why don't you play an A minor once? Because an A minor is a C6, mm -hmm. you know, which makes a perfect, wonderful, a, perf a, a wonderful C. Try to just play another chord and see what happens and maybe you can also do that when you play with recordings together um, uh, and try different things now if you don't try you will never really understand what they do you know because that would be too much to learn intellectually um, just by reading up on it it's much better to just try i was very fortunate to always I've always had my brother and we always played lots of music together and uh, you know I'm not always trying out too much so it gets annoying but I try out a lot of things and see if they work and this trial and error brought me personally a lot more understanding to music than reading up on it which I also did but it, after the fact a lot of times. after the fact a lot of times i understood okay this a is really great i have this flat flat five and you know i start to understand that the f minor is really you know and uh that I, this is a diminished chord and how can i use it and what what could i do with it but these these basic you know trying to find other chord substitutions um other chords than what's already there just by adding notes you know, in traditional jazz theory, you would add notes just, you know, according on the scale. Um, you extend chord extensions, you call them. And then once at one point they become uh, new triads and these become the first substitutions. Like I have a, 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 a G, uh, a, a, tri, a, a triad, and then I have a, a major, then comes the major seven, and then comes the nine, and then comes the C. The six, right? So I, so I add, I add them all on top, and that's how they get these names. But if you just if, uh, uh, play a wrong chord, and then see what does that sound like, uh, that's like really open up a box of a new herb, or going through the woods and 
take it in between your finger and smell on it. That gives you a different experience because in the end we're making music. And we want to, and if I know that flavor, I can then add this flavor to the sound. I, you know, for instance, I have lots of little arpeggios I use in my playing um, that are constantly, constantly, they become, I, because I like them. And it's like a flavor I like. It's like somebody likes Texas Pete, so he puts it over everything. And I have certain things that I like in music that I constantly uh, uh, like. For instance, the D over E minor is something I, I do so much. So uh, I have little arpeggios I do in D, like E minor, E minor. But it starts off with the D arpeggio. As long as I end somehow to that E minor, that dissonance is very satisfying. Okay, <laughs> so uh, I think uh, let's see. Uh, yes, are you going to talk about the, the ninth chord? Uh, yes, uh, that, that's a good thing. The ninth, the ninth chord. There's one chord I always like to uh, uh, sh like to show you. Um, example: a nine chord is just an add nine in jazz. You know, a nine chord. A lot of times, you know, when it says a G, a G nine. You know, it adds actually the the flat seven and a nine. You know, the ninth note, which is then an A, and a flat seven. And a lot of times, a ninth chord. You know, in in jazz books, or so it says you know uh, G nine. So, and if it's just the nine, it, you just have a G add nine. Add nine. Now, if I let's say play a C chord, here's a C chord. And I just play it so I get a nine here, the D, like this. So I have a C here, I have a D here, and a G. It's one of my favorite chords uh, because I don't have to be busy. The banjo is very audible in the in the mix of things, and if I get very busy, I take a lot away sometimes. So I try to not to move. So let's, if Uwe would play, let's say, a, a chord progression that goes like... Uh, uh, down on the coal mine, down below, cover the coal just from head to toe. Ooh, now night and day, come Friday night, I'm gonna get my pay. Come Friday night, I'm gonna get my pay. So you can see that when what, whatever chord he plays, uh, you know, from the G major scale, um, this ninth chord will do some justice. It will do some something that works, and they all have, of course, names. But let's don't go into it, get into that. Let's just play a chord progression that goes C, A minor, D minor, G. same chord just in different inversions so this is one C, C, C9. C9. this is another one with the index finger on the second string here and then the third one is like an F position and I just play the nine here with the D here like this and then it starts off again but you saw that I don't need to change uh, the chords uh, and this helped me a lot, you know. I used to play sideman gigs as a guitarist for singer-songwriters. And you know a lot of the singer-songwriters, they go like... <laughs> and and it almost seems random, you know. And then you, you have to sort of <laughs> work your way on stage to these songs. And you maybe have never even heard them. And you try to find notes that you could play and 
you know and a lot of times even when you <laughs> it's the worst you get you get tired and then all of a sudden you start overthinking things and you always hit the wrong chord you know they go to f you go to g you go to e and then you're like oh my god and so this ninth chord actually helped me a lot sometimes just to take a breath you know uh, just sort of relax you know that's the like, like if, if i do something like like mr bojangles right yeah da, 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 da. But you see, it's kind of bland, but it's never wrong. And it's sort of, and I, all I did, you know, he played all these chords and, and I, all I did was, and the, the good thing is, while I'm doing that, I can learn the song on stage or doing a jam session, you know, and sort of try to remember, okay, there's an A minor, there's this E minor, and I, I can sort of look, do these little things, you know, and sort of play along. That's a, that's a good trick, but I use it in, you know, some of our serious compositions like Winterport and things where I really do this ostinato and use this, this B flat 9. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, that's it for now. I want to just encourage you to uh, let me see if I if I have written down anything else that's really important. I wanted to, um, yeah, I said you know really t t take all the notes that you have on the instrument and try to fit them somehow into the music and see what effect they have. There's really not a wrong note. You just there's just a spice, you know, and and. You know, who would have thought uh, 20 years ago or 40 years ago when I, or 50 years ago when we were kids, who would have thought that someday people would put bacon on ice cream, <laughs> you know, or, uh, <laughs> but it happens, you know, so people get used to new ideas and new sounds that maybe sound strange to the ears today, or look at somebody like uh, um, uh, Jacob Collins, is it Collins, right, Jacob Collins, well, he, who does work in quarter notes that used to be just wrong and but the world gets used to it and the main thing is that you find these spices and don't go oh this is a g let's just don't play anything else than a g or always be in sync with the person you're playing with mm -hmm. uh, think of you as a 50 percent additive to to what's happening and that then in the end there's a product coming out that sounds like music together and you adding you're a vital part of adding your identity through these uh, substitutional spices. Okay, I hope that was that's so much for the for the first. We're going to have a follow up session uh, again next week on this subject as well. So please uh, write in your questions, and um, and we'll we'll go from there. Now we uh, uh, we're going to go on to the next subject unless Jamie Laddie has something to say. I have plenty to say, but most of it right now is revolving around salmon uh, and bread because you made us all hungry during that <laughs> first part of the segment. So we're discussing where to get salmon and how to uh, replicate your recipe from Sunday's uh, cooking show. <laughs> so we appreciate you. <laughs> but uh, a lot of people are definitely uh, really, really soaking it all in and um, in awe of the analogies and, and uh, you put that beautifully. So I'm going to let you crack on with... Uh, next part of this segment okay perfect i was thank you thank you jamie <laughs> You're uh, welcome. i know i'm taking a little uh, long today uh, and this next segment i don't you know i all of these subjects you know could take forever for weeks and weeks and um, uh, but i just want to you know touch on them and give you a sort of an open the door a little bit maybe and maybe you know a lot more about this than me but 
I, I just hope that to give you a little bit of the insight of, of how I think in music, what I think was important in my now uh, f over 40 years of music career, you know, where I fed a family and it was important for me to know things that are that are useful, you know, that I could that I could just put on stage, you know, the next day, most of the time. And I think these uh, uh, these things uh, now talking about the banjo, the next subject is playing without a capo. Now, it's not necessary to play without a capo because we have capos. We don't have to play without a capo. But I see not playing with a capo a great opportunity to broaden your musicality on your instrument. Um, for instance, if if I play the same, you know, if I learn to play how I play in G, I have these licks, all these licks that I, all the things that I've learned in G, and now I just put the capo on. And if I play a real bluegrass tradition, it's not a good idea a lot most of the time to not do that anymore, to not use a capo, because it sounds not traditional anymore, because all of a sudden the things that you used to play don't work anymore. And there's no reason why you should do that, really. Um, uh, of course, with exceptions. Uh, then uh, for the D, I use, you know, uh, even if I don't use a regular caper most of the time, for the D, you know, for the fifth string, I use, I use the little spike, you know, going to A, but if I play in the key of D. Not that I do that all the time, but, but I, I like that A note here. So, but still, again, you know, here I start learning my licks. You know, all the things that, that I learned that I, that I could do in D, and now if we would play in E, I could take my capo, go up to the second fret, and play in the key of D which could be really, really good. But, now here goes the but. There's a, uh, just talking about the key of E. Uwe likes to sing in the key of E because it suits his voice very well. Especially it suits, suits the guitar. It suits the guitar, yeah, yes. Yeah. The guitar sounds great, yeah. open. Now, if a lot of things in, in, in the key of E have a little bit of a bluesy flavor because you have this, this G that goes to a G sharp, you know. Yes, you know, on the, on the third string, on the third string, yeah, this one, you know, so you have this like, so it gives me now, uh, and I have this G note, which is really not part of the, of the E chord. But Tony Trishka once recorded the song. Like, Something like that. I can't remember. He did that on High Country, I think. Uh, that was a great album he recorded. I think a phenomenal album. And I, there he also made great use in playing the key of E open. And uh, just when I play blues, blues scale. And then... Um, So now, when Uwe, when Uwe sings, for instance, uh, what could you sing? Well, I'm standing on the corner, a bucket in my hand, looking for a woman. Ain't got no man on my bucket, got a hole in it. My bucket's got a hole in it. My bucket's got a hole in it. Got a hole in it. My got a hole in it. I'll 
okay so what's of course you know you can say okay yeah it's easy for you to say um but you but, use those substitutions again right but the nice thing is the nice yes i do t substitutions again and the nice thing is if i have an e here if i have an a chord you know first of all i have lots of open notes and and i have lots of so I have lots of open notes actually, bluesy because I got the seven here. This D becomes makes makes an e, e E seven. So if Uwe sings a song in the key of E, that's not bluesy. I'd rather not do it there. You know, I mean that's because I I don't get I don't have all these advantages. But if it's a nice and bluesy tune, which actually a lot of guitarists in the key of E have, so why don't you try also playing it? in this and trying to find this if you never do this you don't find all the opportunities you know now i can i can list to you most of these opportunities and i'm going to also show you two of these opportunities right now for instance if we play a, uh, like, like, like if i play something in f well it, 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 hmm? just in just a second in just a second but let's let's stay with the e just for just for a minute mm. when uwe plays the key of uwe plays e I play E chord. I don't play the fifth string now. And then Uwe plays an A chord. I just play an E minor. You know, so so I, I just. And then for for the five chord, I play an A chord. For a five chord, I play the A chord. Yes, because I get a, it gives me a suspended ninth chord. So so if Uwe goes like da ba da ga da ga da ba da ga da 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 E, and I goes to B and I go to A. Of course, I can I play G. So, so I use substitutions. Going to 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 A, I play a G or E minor, and then for here a G, and and then for the B, I play I play an A. Of course, I also play a B, but I use this A as really the, the flavor. If I would just play the chords that yeah. is playing, it would sound like this. Down to me. Substitutions. So you can use the licks that, that you play in G regularly and just play that instead of A. For instance, I play, um, oh, Black Mountain Rag. See, I'm just, let's say, I'm having Black Mountain Rag in G. And when he plays A, I play Black Mountain Rag in G. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Is that funny or what? I think it's very funny. It's not funny at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, so 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 E is a great key. Now, for all the uh, 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 for all of these different keys that I'm going to talk about here in the next few minutes, um, oh, I don't have much time anymore, but I I, I want to have. Um, yes, somebody is asking about the fifth string capo. Do you use it? Do you like? Yes, it? I use I use I, I don't use fifth string capos. I just have spikes in it. You know, for the essential. Mm -hmm. So I only have one at the seventh fret and one at the ninth fret, and the one at ninth fret I hardly ever use, except I'm in a jam session or anywhere. So I I only use the seventh fret most of the time. That's all I need for what I do. Uh, okay, so I used to have you know these sliding capos, you know, on both sides of the neck. <laughs> uh, now, what, what's important when you when you play in different keys is that you know. That you play out of positions. Let's go back to G and just revisit the positions a little bit. If I have a, a F position like this, try to find the notes in it. You know, it's you know, it, it's good For, when you start off with these little notes that you add to the to the chord. So let me just start here to come to actually connect them into chords in, in scales. It's an it's a easy thing. It's going to be coming very natural if you think about connecting them. Then we have another position like here in D. So, so just find the notes. Just, just, just stay in this position and. What I did a lot of times when I when I uh, um, when I noodled for myself or just played, I would stay in one position for a long, long time. Sometimes a half hour, you know, or longer. And be, because it's so much to explore here in this little. It's just it's just in this little. And here again, to explore these positions, use what I talked about, singing along. So you can explore these positions. So we have three, F, D, and then you can start combining them. I am in the next position and then it all moves together well that's one of the things because when you play let's say in the key I love playing in the key of B flat you know um, when Uwe plays on the third fret uh, and it's a beautiful sound to play in the key of B flat open because I get this G string this G string becomes a six now uh, and it's, it's what we talked about in the beginning. It gives me naturally this beautiful. And so I'm using this I, this position a lot. So so I have the nine the nine right back here. So so. So here for 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 the B flat I used this is my main starting point and the nice thing is now I have a, a D which is the fifth of B flat I can just use that it's nice it gives a nice texture because I have and then if I go to E flat I could play the E flat in the position like this but what I do most of the time when Uwe sings I just take the same position and just play the pinky here ring finger on the third fret and take my index finger and just put it on this on this E flat so I have the root down here and because I'm here on the F it gives me a, a E flat 9 and then back to, to B flat and then I do that 
to F. When I play these, these, I play that all the time because it's basically, you know, it's like this G rig. <laughs> See here, and this, so this becomes a really important uh, uh, position. Yes, uh, and. Now, if the next time you have, especially in slower pieces, you can explore and learn a lot about the banjo and how it behaves in that sort of context. I, context. And if I would constantly use the capo, like Uwe would then use the capo, we would constantly sound the same. And I would mm -hmm. play the same licks over and over, and it would make an, uh, make make it non, not so interesting for myself and for the listener, I believe. It's a different sound um, and different because it's different opportunities different possibilities and you don't have to search far so next time uh, somebody says okay i'm gonna sing a ballad in a okay just try to play it open right just try to play it you see how <laughs> no no <laughs> so, uh, let's see uh, the down and back just before it rained feeling almost as faded as my jeans we thumped the diesel down just before the rain took us all the way to New Orleans I took my heart It's just an example going forward. Um, so next time, you know, just try and try to stay in this open, try to put some uh, open strings in there. I like F. F is a great. I, I, I have to admit, I don't play many songs open like G, uh, like A flat, G sharp. Yeah. I would, you know, or, or the key of B. You know, I don't, I don't play much open the key of B. Because Uwe then either sings it in C or it sings it in B flat most of the time. We don't have much in the key of B, do we? No. And then, and then of course, you know, playing okay. without a capo, I cheat. I have to tell you something. You know, uh, a lot of times Uwe plays in B flat or F, and I like to tune the entire banjo down, which of course is a way of playing with the capo. You know, I play similar things. Just tuned different down. Tuning. Well, different tuning. Different tuning. Yeah, right? different tuning. But when you do like. Yeah, that's like an F.
didn't, I didn't even change the fifth string for, for, for F because also an F it gives me this nine. Okay, I, yeah, it gives me a nine. Just beautiful. So uh, I just want to encourage you in, don't look too far, you know, um, but when you have a singer to, uh, that you play banjo with, uh, try not to use the capo for once and uh, you know, just try playing in the key of F, C, of course, D, A, B flat, E, if it's bluesy, you know. Uh, and sometimes Uwe has a bluesy tune and I want to use a tuned down banjo. Then, then he plays it. and then he plays it in F so I can play. Yeah. And then he just goes on the first fret, you know, and plays it in F. Nobody's fault but mine. Nobody's fault but mine. Well, I just um, just want to encourage you, try to find things that, the opportunities, like an F. I have open chords. You know. And then you can use these open notes or... All right. Uh, I hope that that was a long lesson again. You know, I'm always getting, I'm always over an hour. Um, I, I would actually talk for hours, I believe, <laughs> but, but I was, I hope that I was able uh, this evening again to um, open a few little doors for you and give you a few insights into things that you might have not heard. Um, that would be nice. And again, please uh, write in your questions for next Tuesday, a uh, question answer session where I'm just going to, you can ask me things about these two le le lectures, um, the substitutions and uh, playing without a capo. And uh, I hope we'll see, we'll see you then. Thank you, Uwe. Oh, Thank you, Uwe, for, for helping me. My I brother. learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, Uwe, is not, no, Uwe, Uwe is the best. Well, um, thank you, Jamie. Where are you? I'm right here. Hey, I think I think it would be kind of rude if we didn't give the people what they really want, which is just a, a final song. Say good night to you. What do you think? Just because Uwe is there this week. Come on yeah, now. Let, then, then why don't he, he should sing one? Why don't you play one of these blues? Why don't you play your new one? A new one? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I'm muting. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Well, first I got a tune. wants this so if you don't like yeah, it you'll have to ride Uwe. So this is a weird tuning it's a double C tuning which is the B up to a C and the D down to a C and then I use the fifth string going down to F. And then I play out of F chord, out of, I think I'm out of tune still. Okay, so, so here we go. I don't have a name yet, but there's a few ones.
<laughs> I only have played it a few times and it's brand new. Well, uh, uh, Uwe wanted this, so this is good. <laughs> my, it's all my fault, always. <laughs> no, 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 no. You all take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.